Like and subscribe for more info on products, sales, and training with Pierre Finkelstein. So now we're starting to do some work where, where we have decorative painting. These are, these are sets of doors I've done for a, a client that wanted this sort of 18th century door. So again, you could see on the, so they're, they're pretty involved through a dining room. That, uh, they're definitely over the top, very 19th century, but they were fun to paint. And, you know, the theme was uh, crustaceous there with crabs and lobster and another fish. Um, and again, I, there was a brand new door, so I added all those brush strokes. You could see underneath there, I created a paint that was very thick, so I would get those, the brush strokes you would have found on 18th century work. And then using some of those uh, imagery and knowledge that I built up, again, I, I did the, the acrylic uh, job. I oiled everything with an oil glaze, so that's why you have a little bit of that sheen. And then I did the gilding over to, to create this, those highlights. And, and sometimes adding a little bit highlight again with yellow ochre to even punch it up further. And this is you know close up the door. But you could see now at, uh, <clears throat> the the how the gold you know really in this area how it punches it next to where so w depending on how the light goes, you see how brilliant this is, and this is a little more subdued here because it's in the shadow. So again, so this is painted, this is gilded with paint. So again, a mix of the both for this dramatic effect. Um, here's a huge ceiling I did, uh, and this is actually painted on my shop. This is on the wall, so uh, this is the overall thing. It was a music room, as as this would indicate. Actually, it's written music and poetry. Uh, and again, uh, this idea of again, if I had started putting real gold on this ceiling, on the flat or anywhere, it would have taken away from the entire. Everything would have collapsed because the goal is such a magnet to light and to the visual clue that it, it, it would have rendered all the trompe l'oeil flat. So here, again, I, I decided to do all, all ornamentation that we're gonna do in, in gold imitation in some ways would be done with paint. In London, they had those, those uh, they were pool for sliding doors and they were like this and she said, well, you know, they're really, there's no, Button, they look very flat, you know, I want to replace them. The mill worker was like, you know, we already cut them into the door, what do we do? So I said, leave it to me. And I, I painted those fake little button there. And I even actually, this is painted. I painted a highlight onto the metal oh to God. create that effect even more. So it, this is very close up. So, it, you know, you, you have the painter, the, but you know, they're, they're, they're about, um, you know, eight inches tall. So. And no one knows that there's no button there, but they were, she was very happy. She actually thought there were buttons at one point. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so again, coming from that sign painting and decorative painting tricks, just, just this, this application, uh, again, for visual effect, the, the, the importance is that what I'm going to do at the end. Uh, I, I think I have a little film here. This is the way I cut my goal with my nail, by the way. I, I don't use a, a an up. So that's the traditional, again, that's the sign painting way, but that's how I learned to, to cut a gold. I fold the paper and then with, uh, oh, well, I, this one is cut, but just by scoring with my nail, oh, and I'm gonna pick up that little piece upward. There we go, don't waste any gold. You see, I fold the paper, there's no backing. If I can grab the paper, there we go. Fold it. The problem, the problem I always find with that is that um, it leaves a little mark on the next page, but I guess if you cut them all in half, it doesn't really it's matter. It's it, exactly. It's the same way when you cut them with a, with a knife directly on the, on, the, on the book. It does, it actually leaves a stronger mark with a knife than it does with a nail. Because the nail, it does, it's, it doesn't cut it. It scores it. You, you, my nails are not very long, as you can see. You, I'm, just, I'm just doing, I'm, as I'm folding the paper to, to the width of the thing, I'm also scoring the thing. So with my gilding tip, this is a, um, uh, oh, this is squirrel. So I love those. I, I use two types of, uh, of tips. I use squirrel and I use a uh, sable. So when I knew a molding that has some profile, I'll use squirrel because it's a little more meaty. But if I do straight leaf, I'll use the, the sable. And another trick that I can, that I, I don't know if I came up with it, but I'm, I'm using it is when I have a molding of a small profile, I had this job, it was, it was really 
they were in, in molding they were installed so they were not loose but i tr i practiced loose so I, I i leave my leaf on the tip and using this the squirrel because it's so thick and then with a mop i push it in you know i i I place it over my my surface, and then with my mop, I push it in into to full every crevices of the of the molding, and that that worked out really well because there was glass mirror everywhere, and it was there was no room to move, and that was that that worked out well. Um, it works again uh, to me. It, it it it's 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 the lack of of, of knowledge in some time, and so what what can I and I need to I need people to that are not super gilder to help me, and I'm gonna find techniques that are gonna be applicable. This is an interesting, the reason I'm showing you this is because I did this job in, in Santa Barbara and it was a tray ceiling, uh, you know, you can see here it's being done. And they, you know, and I wanted a beautiful 45 degree cut here. I didn't want to overlap. Almost three days later, when I removed the plastic, the wrinkles you could see here had left a highlight and a shadow on the, on the gold. But I'll show you the next picture you can't tell any of that once i'm done and these wrinkle us from the gold you know because it's the when the goal is on the roll they always have like a sort of a print uh but look look how sharp this angle is it, it, it so really when, looks, when you came i'm just amazed because and i'm sure every a lot of people can relate to that when you came back and you saw the wrinkles will you just forget about it that start fresh or did you just say okay let's just Go for it and I, 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 I mean, it's 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 like a, you're halfway to the moon and then you're closer to the moon than to Earth. You know, it's point yeah. of no return. Okay, whatever. Uh, so I say, okay, you want me to gild it? I'll gild it. That's not a problem. So, but I say, be mindful because we went through that problem before. When it's gilded, nobody can touch it, or I varnish it. But if you varnish it, I said, you know, it's kind of the face is the goal. No, 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 not varnish. I say, you sure? Okay. So we we went. They built a structure. Uh, that's a year ago or something. And we actually built a scaffold and, a, but I said, you can't touch it. You, you understand it? No, 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 I know. Within three days, they had a party and this was completely ruined, completely gold gone everywhere. So I said, you gotta go back and do touch up. I said, well, that's not gonna happen. You're gonna have the same problem. So we, we're, uh, we're gonna re-gild it, but this time I'm gonna lacquer it. That's the only way that's gonna preserve it. Except the, the, by that time, the 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 structure with the sca the scaffold was all tented up was gone. I only had ladders and that thing, and I went there and tried to gild with loose leaf, and the wind is blowing the salt water every night all over the surface, and I can gild. So I said I have to use patent leaf, and and with a patent leaf, if you know anything about it, you need two hands, one to take it out of the book, which you know, it, it'll fly all over if you open it up, and they want to go. So I built this stupid contraction out of a cardboard box and I put a tape, this is a piece of tape in between. So I had the leaf separated. So in one hand, I could just pull the leaf. I had to be very close to the, to the metal because the wind was blowing. I mean, it didn't take me down, but it was, you could not hold the, the, the goal with your hand. It would just fly off your hand. So I had to be very close. So again, creativity here where I have to just pull the leaf out of my little pouch, my little kangaroo pouch, you know, with tape everywhere and directly put it on the on the on the surface and then leaf it and so this is also like when i uh when i leave this is this is aluminum so there are a lot of times when i'm going to use aluminum and dutch metal but the reason is i use that as a background i never use it as a i mean either i want to paint an ornament on it either i'm going to glaze it so i use it for the reflectiveness if it's just going to be solid I'm gonna to try to use just palladium. But there's been a shortage of palladium, as you know, lately, because the German auto industry use it for their catalyzed uh, carburetor. And so it's nearly impossible to find any uh, palladium. So we, we were in a bind, we had to do this job. So you just Dutch metal. So I found this, this little metal uh, thing here. It basically, it was sort of a roller deck. When I bought, um, um, stickers they come in a roll and this is the dispenser and i say look it fits perfectly my roll of of uh aluminum and i plugged it like this i put little popsicle sticks on the other hand so i can have one guy you could see the contraption held in his hand and rolls it the roman here holds it at the end the sticks 
makes it so it's completely flat, it doesn't buckle up. And then I go in the middle and I go toward him with a brush, a flat spalter, and I go to my uh, Roman, my son there, on the other side. And that gives me a perfect laid uh, grid and, and we, you know, quickly. And again, those two guys are definitely not gold expert. Mm -hmm. I can vouch for that. Uh, but here's the ceiling when it's all done, perfectly gridded, nicely laid out. And then I use uh, a shifter. This is the this is the, the this um, this is my sales pitch, by the way. Uh, <laughs> this is my it's a shifter. It's a brush that was designed for doing full marble, but it's it's uh, mostly squirrel, a little bit of goat hair, and it's perfect to remove the skewer. And this is a mop uh, that I use also to clean up, just to go out of 90 degrees angle to clean up the skewer. Because as you know, the skewer for um, Aluminum and Dutch metal are a lot thicker than gold skewer, so it takes a little more strength to remove them without scratching the the, the ceiling with the stippling. So it was I found it interesting that you stippling aluminum powder and mica powder directly on a silver it creates a very um, metallic-y uh, finish that's really beautiful and a clear gloss on top of that and look really splendid. Talking about brushes now, so th those are some of the, so again, I, you know, I do my sizing, I do my shellac first, a uh, size of a, and I go strong in my color because if, if I do an or, uh, an oil gilding, or even a water gilding that is not, you know, like the traditional oil gilding, I, I tend to go a little darker on my bowl, which is not bowl, it's just paint with shellac on top of it, because when I do the aging, then I have that beautiful dense color coming through. So I found it to be a little more aggressive on the red, makes it a little more, realistic in, uh, when you're not doing a traditional water gilding. Uh, and uh, again, uh, to go faster, I have my gilded tip here and then I taped at the end a mop, you see like this. So I, I apply my gold, I cut it with my finger and then with the mop, I flip my brush and push it down there again to go faster. I'm gonna show you how, this is, this is how I apply size, this is color, but it's, Oh, this is the business. There we go. Sandra, you take it. <laughs> Fullbrushes.com. Fullbrushes.com. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is a, one of my favorite, but it's a little stiff. So when you use a Dutch metal or something a little stiffer, this is badger tip. So I mentioned that because it, a certain leaf will, will require a stiffer type of uh, uh, hair. And the sable is not strong enough to pick up Dutch metal. It won't be... It won't be strong enough. So Badger has got a nice stiffness to it. And I'm really happy with this. Um, so if you go to our site, again, this is, this is my infomercial. You, you, under gilding, you'll see all the tip we have, all our handmade, all our handmade in France. Uh, the, so now we're gonna conclude everything. I'm gonna show you four or five gilding projects, like purely strictly gilding with the decorative sense into it. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go on to our, um, talks so we actually I start with the gilding this is not gilding at all this is paint but that's my point is that we had this mantle made out of wood um, carved wood and I wanted a gunmetal finish and then I created that beautiful little texture stippled on so they have that really hammered look you know when a cast bronze or iron does not have a smooth finish as a little pitted finish and then painted with different um, silver micas to create a background and then glaze and wiped off and then you have this it, 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 amazing uh, 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 metallic finish like gun metal but it's right out of wood the the final look is just stupendous and then you know it weighs you know a, 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 a tenth of what a real one would do and plus you would have to create a matrix to create this out of bronze i mean we auto expense this was carved wood uh, that might be also a VCA, beautiful uh, fireplace. But again, uh, mixing the technique of different artisan is one thing that really I'm, I'm dear, it's dear to me, like using some of these beautiful carving and then we use our technique and then some of our uh, uh, unknown technique because sometimes you come up with something particular to create that look and it, and it works fabulously. Uh, this, this is an interesting thing and it was, the purist might be, might be vomiting on this one, but I thought it was funny. It, this was an old frame that a client of mine bought it in an auction. Uh, I'm just gonna see if there's a photo of the frame. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a large frame. The gold was completely beaten down. It was really in a bad, bad shape. 
and uh, had been touched up with, with paint and all that. And he said, I want to, I said, listen, uh, you want to have it restored, bring it to proper restore, they'll strip it, recarve everything and do that. I said, but what we could do is we create, we can create a finish out of this, something a little more, uh, it was actually a little more gothic, a little more, uh, it was a very modern apartment. And I said, well, let me send it down, shellac it still, and then start pulling layer of, of black and green plates, little by little, uh, this is me applying some shellac on it and then building up a color, but it's still having some of that gold coming through. So we sent it with a lot soft fat. So the, pop, the, the gold was peaking true. Uh, this is before, you know, the final thing. And then I waxed it and then burnished the wax almost like with an aga, aga, agate stone. And look at the, 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 the result is actually brilliant. You've got a little bit of that old gold coming through. You have that sheen from the wax that give that almost that burnished hammered look to it. And uh, it's very modern. It was, you know, it's a cheap thing. And, you know, half a day, it's worth done. And it looked really well. So again, a way to, re to repurpose uh, an, an old frame and make it, a, give it a second life. Again, it's, you know, it's, one might think it's disturbing because it's black, but it looked very, it's between a, a wrought iron, forged iron and, and a wood paint, you know, it, it doesn't have a, a, a fine category, but I think the, the result was very happy with it.